Professor Lessig, uh, welcome to Berlin. Um, nice to have you here. Um, I wanted to draw some um, some lines to two years ago when you were in Berlin for your TEDx um, talk. And that you mentioned that the way that people um, view facts, you said, is a mathematical function of a tribe. Uh, what kind of tribe do you see emerging around Wikipedia or being behind Wikipedia? What kind of tribe is that in that sense? Well, it's a good distinction between the kinds of tribes that I was talking about um, and the tribe of Wikipedia. Because the tribes that I was talking about, primarily the tribes that are developing around news sources in the United States or partisan tribes, and the platform for accessing our view of the world is increasingly divided. Um, and in, in the United States in particular, you've seen this incredible polarization in the platforms of Fox News versus MSNBC, um, and thereby constructing tribes of humans who see the world in this radically different way. The reason they do that, the reason this makes sense, is the business model of hate, which this is, is driven by the advertising model of economy. Um, it turns out that advertising is most profitable the more you can polarize and enervate. Um, and, and so that's, what dri that's the business model that drives into this polarized political world. And the consequence of it is a much weaker capacity for our democracy to address fundamental questions in a serious way. Now, by contrast, the tribe of Wikimania or Wikimedia or Wikipedia um, has been governed by a very important ethic and a set of norms from the very beginning. Um, I mean, there was a decision not to engage in advertising as a model of support. Um, and there's an explicit set of norms about how one does work within this universe that's designed to mitigate against the division and um, blindness that's produced by polarized cultures or tribes. Um, so part of what I want to talk about tomorrow is the inspiration that could be drawn from what's happened in the Wikipedia world for the rest of the world, which is slowly waking up to realize it doesn't have the capacity to think seriously about anything. I mean, Wikipedia has maybe the advantage to be one version per language of a given topic that's different in the media landscape where you have different outlets, different newspapers, different channels. Um, Wikipedia is just one, at least per language is only one. Do you still think the rest of the world or the rest of the internet users in general can derive something from that, even though this single front page thing is not present everywhere? Absolutely. Um, you know, the most important thing that's developed is an expectation of trust around the platform of information that Wikipedia provides, regardless of the community or regardless of the language. And obviously, you know, some people are disadvantaged because their natural language is not a natural Wikipedia community. Um, but uh, what I think is important is what is the incentives of those who are con contributing to the community and whether the structure of incentives gives us a reason to be confident about the product. And the contrast I was trying to draw in thinking about media in the United States is that the structure of incentives gives us no reason to believe in the ultimate product as reflecting the truth or reflecting the kind of understanding we need. Um, and that's a choice about the structure of incentives. And so Wikipedia can have different communities, but there's a common set of assumptions about what the project is. And I think that's very distinctive and incredibly important for building what's been built. In the case of Wikipedia, this has developed this way. I, I think to some extent also by the fact that this had to work in this kind of project frame. Um, how, how can this agreement of values or of trust um, 
work in the general world in the like outside of a given project it's really hard to imagine it working i mean i think it's it's a not, it's a first step to to stand back and to realize where cultures are producing knowledge we should feel confident about and cultures that are not producing knowledge we should feel confident about so the knowledge environments of facebook or Twitter or cable news in the United States is destructive of understanding. It's, it undermines the capacity to have confidence. Um, and, and we should look at why. But, but once we understand why, which I think is you know, a combination of choosing to monetize advertising and not thinking about the ethics or the, the, the rules that will govern the construction of knowledge enough. Once you recognize that difference, it's not clear how you export the values of Wikipedia into the values of Fox News. It's not clear there's a business model for that. And, and so I, one of the deep problems I think we face as democracies, especially you know, the United States is kind of at the lead on this problem, but we're seeing it in Britain too, is if we don't have a capacity to build a community that has a common understanding of a problem, then we don't have the capacity to build a democracy. And, and we have to figure a way around that uh, if we're gonna continue to believe in this potential for democracy. So you say democracy is basically a function of communities. It's, you need, you first need a community able to agree on certain values and trust and um, bottom line of various things. And then you can have a democracy working. Is that, did I get you right there? Well, I would say you could layer democracy on any community, but when layered on some communities, it functions better than others. So what is the difference between those communities? Communities where there's some common basis of fact, people have a common sense of what we're talking about. Not necessarily everybody's the same values. That's fine. Like you, I mean, obviously, democracy is about working out how people with different values will go forward. So it's not that they all have to agree, but they have to have some sense of the problem in this, see the problem in the same way, and have a capacity for engaging, which is inclusive as opposed to exclusive. And I think the problem we're seeing is that. We're layering democracy on communities that have none of those values. Um, uh, and what that means is it doesn't function to knit the society together. In fact, functions to help polarize the society. You know, the business model of cable television is the same as the business model of political parties in the United States. It's all about teaching people how to hate the other side. Uh, and that's where everybody profits, the more we hate. And if that's true, then it's not clear how that cycles towards some common uh, framework for solving what are common problems. How can, can a project like Wikipedia um, counter the, the obviously massive demand for simple answers, alternative facts, and, and sometimes plain sensational news? I mean, you said the business model of, of the uh, of, of cable television or showing people the latest scandals is, has always been um, the biggest headline, the, the, uh, the strongest story, the greatest scandal. Um, can a project like Wikipedia counter this demand for this kind of um, view on facts, which is usually distorted in some way? Well, the first important thing to recognize is that you've inoculated yourself against that virus um, because you've not built advertising into the business model. Um, I'm sure you do page counts and I'm sure you sort of look at which articles are getting the most attention and stuff, but you don't get paid as a function of how many people see a certain article versus another article. So there's not an ongoing pressure for the Wikipedia community to try to produce stuff that grabs people's attention. Um, it's it's in fact a completely different objective. It's just to produce new, it's just to produce knowledge that is available when people want it. And 
it's not a failure that there's some article about some, um, you know, fourth century uh, king <laughs> that gets viewed 12 times. It's not a failure. Um, that's, you know, those 12 times it was important there was a place to go to find that knowledge. Um, uh, but in a, in a cable news environment or in a Facebook environment, the idea that your post got, you know, 12 views, is that's a terrible thing. So the point is you've not locked yourself into a, um, a discipline of responding to sensationalism. And that is an enormously valuable fact. You know, it's astonishing to think that had Jimmy and the Wikipedia community not made that choice, if they had instead gone the direction of advertising, what in the world on the internet would there be to look at to say, geez, there's a different model, <laughs> right? No, literally, there's nothing else. And, and yet this model is, you know, one of the top, I don't know, based on how you want to look at it, but certainly one of the top presences on the net. And it, can t and it teaches that you don't have to sell sensationalism to succeed. Um, or at least there's still a demand for something other than sensationalism that can succeed. Is there, is there a real chance to um, to get to a different kind of incentive structure or something that is more, is it this, this other model that Wikipedia is representing? Is, is there any, do you see any any line at the horizon where we could get to another way of, uh, another business model for, for democracy, basically? We have to, um, there's no choice. If democracy is going to survive, we have to think about this alternative. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think that alternative looks like. But a core part of it is recognizing that we're never going to produce a society where everybody at any moment knows enough about anything to be interesting. We, pres we assume they do because we like poll people. And we say to them, you know, what do you think about, um, you know, Brexit? What do you think about climate change? What do you think about nuclear power in Europe? And we ask them questions and they give answers and we tabulate them and we say 47% are this way and 26% are that way. But when you look at it, we know that people don't know enough to know the answer to any of these questions. And they've not been given a chance to deliberate about what the right answer should be. So rather than imagining we can reach the view of the people by just calling them on their telephones or sending them an email uh, for online surveys. We have to begin to build communities of constructed, deliberative, representative citizens. And, you know, like deliberative polls mm -hmm. is the model. And, and not for every question. I don't, I don't believe in direct democracy. I don't think we should get rid of representative democracy. I think representative democracy is really important. We need to experiment with it, but it's still a critical part. But when we feel like we need to understand what the people think, We have to begin to think about how do we build a people worthy of our name, that a people whose judgments we would be proud of. And we know how to do that. You know, randomly select 500 people, give them information, let them deliberate, small groups, large groups. And over a course of even just a weekend, the views that develop out of that are worthy of the name the people. And I think we need to multiply the number of those experiments. I know that you know it's happening in Germany, it's happening in France, um, but we need to multiply them so that we get to a place where there's another picture of the people that um, is edifying and exciting. Um, just like on the internet, you know, if you step back and you look at the internet, circa 2020, so much of it is just terrible. There's great stuff, like it's exciting stuff. There's, don't get me wrong, on the culture side, I think it's amazing. But on the knowledge side, it's just so much terrible. Except there are these bright spots. You know, Wikipedia is a bright spot. Um, the, the open science locations are bright spots, right? Um, and I think if we look at what makes them work or what doesn't poison them, um, we can learn something, and that's the same kind of analysis we need to make about our presence as the people in democracy. Yeah, so we as a 
as this Wikimedia Deutschland uh, Verein, we have around 75,000 members. And we did deliberative polling twice um, on certain um, strategic questions. But what do you uh, recommend where to, so, so which kinds of questions are um, questions that can go this way and are good for deliberative processes and which ones should remain with uh, the representative bodies or parliaments and, and the like? Well, I think, you know, there's a number of strategies for thinking about this. I can speak more to what would make sense in the States than I can for Germany. But, um, you know, for, in, for example, in the United States, there are certain questions we know the representatives cannot answer sensibly. Um, they can't address climate change. They can't address guns. They just can't address them. You know, they, if they talk about them, um, they will be decimated because of the influence of money inside of the political system. So I think you can start by looking at the issues that, that the politicians get stuck on. They can't make progress. And have a deliberative poll around those issues that would provide a resource for the representative body. Um, you know, I've just finished a book and I'm, I have this part where I talk about, you know, institution that enables five deliberative polls, nationwide deliberative polls to happen at the same time on a particular question. And at the end of it, you know, you come out with the results from those five polls. Um, and if they are consistent and significant in the movement that they track, that becomes an argument for the representative body. Like, okay, we've been arguing about this for 40 years, gun control. We've never made any progress. But look, the people constituted in a way that's representative and informed and deliberative have said this. Shouldn't we take this as a signal of what our mandate should be? Um, I think if we, if we did that systematically, if we created institutions to enable that, we could begin to feel like the people are uh, valuable <laughs> contributors to a democracy. I think right now we look at democracy, we look at the people and we think, oh my God, it's a disaster. Um, and you know, the Anglo democracies, uh, Britain and America right now, are just the most embarrassing democracies around, which weakens the commitment people have to the idea of democracy. Because if this is what it produces, then maybe we should think about an alternative. You said you see two elements that are central for democ uh, democratic participation. One is information. And of course, um, Wikipedia's role in information is quite obvious. And the other is sense of importance. Is that also what you mean with this deliberative? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, if you look at like the 2016 presidential election in America, the most covered issues by all press, you know, liberal and conservative, were the so-called scandals, like the Clinton email scandal, the most covered issue in that election. And that's because it's what people were all excited about and that therefore drove ratings to cover this sensational issue. But but the significant salience of that issue to the importance of America, future of America, is, is completely uh, uh, negated by the reality that there wasn't a scandal and this is not what we should be talking about. But the point is that information is important, but also staying focused on what should be an issue that we need to address. And so that's why I think we should just let culture be what culture wants. People will entertain themselves with news or they'll entertain themselves with old movies or with music, whatever, who cares? It's a free society, you can do whatever you want. But when we need to reach down and say, what do the people think about X? We need to be really careful about the process that produces that answer. Just like Wikipedia is incredibly careful about the process that produces an article. It's not just, you just didn't put up a web page and say, do go at it. You put up a process for producing knowledge. And that's the thing that should inspire us in the democracy space, recognizing it's, it's not self, it just doesn't produce itself. It needs to be structured and constructed and disciplined. And I think that's the hope that we could, we could apply to democracy. Thank you very much.
um, for your time and um, looking forward to the keynote tomorrow. And um, I guess there's going to be discussions, uh, especially on this democracy saving um, aspect, or at, at least at the prospect that something can be drawn from uh, from projects like Wikipedia. It's not the only one. I tend to uh, tend to say that in addition, because it's it's not just it's just the most visible one. And so thank you very much for being here. Thanks.